Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it, and I appreciate all your uh, testimony here. Uh, Chairwoman, uh, just like with the FTC oversight hearing, I've been anxiously waiting for the FCC's return to the Hill for its due oversight hearing. Uh, and right before the agency is set to testify, it magically starts to respond to congressional letters. Imagine that. Announce grant awards, and in this case, break news on the establishment of a new privacy task force. Over the past few years, considerable time and effort on the Innovation Data and Commerce Subcommittee, of which I chair, has been occurring on a bipartisan data privacy bill, so we're working on that. I expect you are familiar with previous versions, of course, of the efforts, which include having the FTC regulate common characters collection, use, and transfer of uh, consumer information as opposed to the FCC. So the question is, uh, Madam Chairwoman, uh, should our takeaway on your privacy task force be that the FCC wants to regulate on top of what the FTC regulates on data privacy protections? Consumers care deeply about communications privacy. That's why Congress provided the FCC with authority to address communications privacy in Section 222 of the law, Section 631 of the law, and Section 337 of the law. We are using those provisions to help protect consumer privacy right now. We're not waiting for new laws. We're going to use them as much as we can to protect consumers as much as we can. The bottom line is that we have data breach laws that need to be updated in the communications sector. We have SIM swapping fraud we need to get on top of. And we have the enforcement of geolocation fines that needs to take place. I don't think we should apologize for using the law as we have it before us and protecting consumers' privacy. Well, you know, I, I know you just uh, stated and you cited some uh, sections, statutes. Again, uh, elaborate a little. Can you? Uh, which sections of the statutes you rely on to provide with the authority to regulate uh, data privacy? I know you just you just stated that, but uh, customer pro proprietary network information and customer network information is regulated under Section 222 of the law. There are comparable provisions for cable services and satellite services and other sections of the law. These have been in the place for decades. Okay. And I think it's incumbent on the agency to use them in a modern way. All right. That's I, what we're doing. Uh, next question. As you know, Spectrum Auction Authority has expired. Leading up to that end date, no one truly knew how that expiration would impact the process of auctions that were completed, and winners were simply waiting for the issuance of licenses. Now we know the Commission has taken a limited view on these license issuing authorities. Given that the hurricane season has begun, I'm most concerned about the ins ensuring that we can have resilient connections and have the ability to get networks back online as quickly as possible if they go down during a natural disaster. And as you know, the hurricanes affect my state of Florida, uh, and we have a lot of rural areas in my district. With auction authority having expired, why haven't you utilized temporary basis authorities for the use of the 2.5 gigahertz spectrum, which would better allow for spectrum utilizations in the aftermath of a hurricane or other natural disaster. If you well, can answer that. I appreciate what you're saying about Florida following hurricanes Ian and Fiona. I went and spent time with public safety authorities in Florida and Lee County and talked to them about some of these issues. So I realize how important it is for restoration. But the FCC's authority to grant spectrum licenses expired. The law is super clear. It says, you shall have the authority to grant licenses, and it expires on March 9th. Any special temporary authority is subject to that broader authority. And so we are right now tying ourselves in knots trying to figure out how to get these licenses out. And the precedent we have here is complicated because issuing these licenses now could violate the Anti-Deficiency Act, which is a criminal statute. And just so you know, the last time that the FCC was alleged to have violated the Anti-Deficiency Act involving spectrum policy, we had all sorts of staff in the agency get investigated by the GAO. They had to hire their own counsel. I don't want to have any of that nonsense happening again, but I would happily work with you and everyone else on this committee 
to do whatever we can to make sure we get that spectrum auction authority back and definitely make sure we get it back before hurricane season gets fully underway. Well, please, I look forward to working with you. Please follow up. I'll, I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman.